Hello, this is Arkasha from MCAT Simplified. Today we're going to be talking about titrations and titration curves. Okay, so in order to understand sort of how titrations work and how these curves are created, we got to imagine that we have some sort of volumetric flask or container where we have an aqueous solution containing some known amount and concentration of an acid or a base that we're titrating, okay? And this is what we're going to call the analyte solution, okay? It has the acid or the base that we're quote-unquote analyzing, all right? And what we're going to do is we're, we're going to measure the initial pH using a pH meter or a pH stick. Um, or we can calculate it if we know the concentration of the volume and we can use our, you know, pH is equal to negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration or if it's a weak acid, we can, we can calculate using the pKa. But ultimately what we're going to do, we, we will have the initial pH. And then we're going to drip in known amounts and known volumes of known volumes and known concentrations of some sort of strong acid or strong base. All right. And every so every amount, every certain volume that we add in, we're going to again measure the pH. And then we're going to plot that information. Okay. And right, if we have like an unknown amount of an acid or a base in this in this solution, we can measure the concentration, for example, or sorry, we can measure the pH using like pH meters or pH sticks along the way. And that can give us information about how much was in there to begin with, right? Depending on the amount that we're adding in of the strong acid or the strong base and the pH changes that we see. All right. So we need to be familiar with some scenarios of these curves, you know, what they look like, and like generally speaking, what's happening when we're looking at these curves, when we're titrating certain types of acids and bases. So the first scenario is going to be with a weak acid being titrated by a strong base. So in this case, in our volumetric container, to begin with, we have an aqueous solution of some weak acid. A good example is acetic acid. And when we just have that, like it's just a weak acid, nothing has been added, you know, that acid, that, that acid since it's a weak acid and, it's, and there's an aqueous solution that has water, it reacts weakly with water to produce, you know, some amount of, of hydronium or, or protons. And so you will have an acidic solution. It won't be super, super acidic, but it will be acidic. So it'll start like somewhere down here. All right. Remember, weak acids don't really want to react too much. They have a, a small K value. The equilibrium constant is very small suggesting that a lot of the reactants are left intact at equilibrium. So a lot of the acid, which is the reactant, didn't react. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add a strong base, which is going to be sodium hydroxide in this case. And we're going to, know, we're going to, we're going to add known amounts of it, all right? And we're going to measure the pH change along the way. And what we see here, right, is we're, we're adding the acid, it's going up, and then it gets to this range here where, you know, we're adding this sodium hydroxide, but the pH isn't changing drastically. And so this is the buffer region, the buffer range right here. And the reason this is happening is because as you add in the sodium hydroxide, it's reacting with the strongest acid available, which is the acetic acid. And that produces the, the conjugate base, which is acetate, which is a weak base relative to sodium hydroxide. So instead of sodium hydroxide simply reacting with water, which would produce purely hydroxide ions and drastically increase the pH. It's instead first reacting with acetic acid to produce acetate, and then it is the acetate species that reacts with the water. And that reaction uh, proceeds much less, uh, well, it, it proceeds in much lower amounts, right? Because it's a weak base, so it doesn't really want to react with water too strongly, and so only a small amount of hydroxide is produced. And so the pH increase is very slight, okay? However, if you keep adding sodium hydroxide, right, eventually all of this acetic acid will be neutralized. All of it will be converted into acetate. And then if you continue adding in more sodium hydroxide after that, there's no stronger acid remaining to react with it besides water. So at that point, sodium hydroxide will start reacting with water and the, 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 the pH of the solution will increase rapidly. And this is what we're seeing in this part of the curve. And then it'll go up to a, a high pH level. Okay, so here we have two points, right? The first point is the half equivalence point. And remember, this is, the this is the point at which the concentration of the acid, the original weak acid, is equal to the concentration of the conjugate base. So enough of the sodium hydroxide has been added to actually convert 
half of this initial starting concentration into its conjugate base, which makes them equal at this point, at this concentration of added titrant, right? So the amount of the titrant added, in this case, sodium hydroxide, is going to be one half the initial concentration of the acetic acid, okay? So that's the, equal, the half equivalence point. And if we use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, right, and we, and we plug in, so the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, right, is pH is equal to pKa of the acid plus log of the, high, the proton concentration divided by, or sorry, the, this is actually supposed to be the conjugate base concentration, I apologize, uh, divided by the conjugate acid concentration. So this is A minus, actually. This is A minus, okay? So if we do that and we know that the half equivalence point, these two are equal, this quotient will actually be equal to one. So then we plug in the numbers. We know the pKa of acetic acid, the pKa of acetic acid is actually 4.7, okay? It's 4.7 plus log of one and log of one is zero. So the pH at the half equivalence point is equal to, to the pKa. And that's the other significance of the half equivalent point. And then we have this area here, which corresponds to where this curve inflects drastically. And then the pH rapidly increases for small amounts of, an, uh, of titrant added. So this is the equivalence point, And this is when enough of the titrant, in this case, sodium hydroxide, has been added to equal the initial concentration of acetic acid. So all of this acetic acid that was present initially would have now been converted into acetate. And if you add even a little bit more of sodium hydroxide above that, well, it's now starting to react with just water. So this, the, the pH will increase rapidly, okay? Now, one of the significant things is like, we're not really doing any calculations here or anything, but even just conceptually, right? Is this, is the pH at this equivalent, equivalence point, is it going to be greater than seven equal to seven or less than seven? So in other words, is it going to be acidic, alkaline, or neutral? Well, notice that if right? If this equivalence point is indeed where the sodium hydroxide concentration, enough of it has been added such that all the acetic acid initially has been converted to acetate, then at that very point, the only species available that is not water is acetate. And so that acetate is also a base, albeit a weak base. So it will react with water and it will create some hydroxide. So at this point, no matter what, there has to be relatively more hydroxide ions than, than protons. So whenever the proton to hydroxide ratio is less than one, that means that the pH has to be alkaline. It has to be greater than seven. That's because there's relatively more hydroxides than protons, okay? So more hydroxide than proton. So the equivalence point for a situation like this has to be greater than seven, all right? But now let's look, look at, an at another situation, which is when we have a weak base with a strong acid. In this case, we're using ammonia. So ammonia is a weak base, okay? And if we add hydrochloric acid, this will be converted into ammonium, which is its conjugate acid plus chloride anion from the hydrochloric acid. And it happens that the pKa of, of ammonium, remember this is based on the conjugate acid, the pKa is 9.25. So let's look at these points, right? So the half equivalence point is right here. And notice, again, if we're starting, we just have a solution of just ammonia. Nothing has been added. And so this is, you know, it's a weak base. So it's going to react with just water and it's going to produce some hydroxide ions, right? So the pH is going to be, it's going to be relatively alkaline. But then when we start adding in the hydrochloric acid, the pH will start to decrease, but it won't really decrease significantly. And again, you have a clear buffer range here. And this is going to be the half equivalence point. And the pH, right, remember, the pH at this half equivalence point is going to be equal to the pKa. And in this case, it's 9.25. All right, so that's going to be right here. pH here, corresponding to where the amount of hydrochloric acid that has been added is equal to one half the initial I, sub I, ammonia concentration, right? Such that half of this initial ammonia has been converted into ammonium, okay? And again, right, when we plug that into the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation, we're gonna get that the pH is equal to the pKa. And then we have the equivalence point. So here again, enough hydrochloric acid has been added, right, such that all of this initial ammonia has been converted to ammonium. And at that point, any additional acid added, strong acid added, will only be able to react with water. 
and then that will produce directly hydromium or protons, right? So the pH will dip really fast, all right? Now, is this equivalence point going to be less than or, or greater than seven, okay? Is it gonna be acidic or neutral? Well, in this case, it has to be acidic. And the reason is because, again, at that exact equivalence point, enough of the acid has been added to completely completely convert all of this ammonia, this weak base, into this ammonium, this weak acid. And so this will then be able to react with water and produce some protons. And so at that point, right, the pH has to be less than seven, because again, since this can react with water to produce protons, there has to be relatively more protons than hydroxide ions. All right, so the pH is going to be less than seven. So then we're going to have these two situations. So what if we do this with a, where, where we're starting with a strong acid, like hydrochloric acid, and then we add strong base. So we're titrating the strong acid, which is the analyte, with the strong base. So this reaction is going to be hydro, uh, sorry, uh, hydrochloric acid plus sodium hydroxide, and that produces water and sodium chloride. Well, at the start, again, we, in the flask, we only have uh, hydrochloric acid. So the pH is really low. It's completely dissociated, right? But then when we start adding sodium hydroxide, you know, when there's still uh, hydrochloric acid present, these just react to produce water. So the pH really, it, it's not changing. You, you're, just, you're just neutralizing some of this strong acid. But when, when you've added enough sodium hydroxide to equal the initial concentration of hydrochloric acid, at that point, all of it has been converted to water. And if you add even a little bit more sodium hydroxide, of course, the pH is going to shoot up, all right? And so at this point, there's no half equivalence point. There's really just this, there's really just this equivalence point. And remember that at this equivalence point, you've added exactly enough sodium hydroxide to equal the initial amount of hydrochloric acid. So everything has been neutralized. There's no additional sodium hydroxide and there's no hydrochloric acid left. And so it's just water. And so therefore, the pH at this equivalence point, when all the species are, have been turned into water effectively, the pH is that of water. It's seven, right? It's seven at you know, tw 25 degrees Celsius. So that's why this equivalence point is actually corresponding to a pH of seven, because you only have water at this point. And then kind of a similar situation happens if you start with a strong base, like you start with the sodium hydroxide in the flask, and you titrate it with a strong acid. So here you have the sodium hydroxide, again, the solution because and initially it's reacting with just water. So it is going to be alkaline. It's going to be high pH. But then you start adding acid. And so initially it's just neutralizing some of the sodium hydroxide. You still have more hydroxide than acid. But then eventually you get to the equivalence point. You've added enough to completely neutralize this. Okay, the equivalence point is again seven because you just have water left at that point. But then you keep adding acid and the pH dips to an acidic pH. And that's the whole idea of titrations. So that's our video on titrations. Check out our website at mcatsimplified.com.